104.7 FM. Good morning, I'm Dan Michael. This is the Morning Cafe. We've got Congressman John Shimkus with us this morning. And uh, here's something of interest to everyone around the area. The Farm Bill. Have we really, is this actually <laughs> happening? That there is an actual Farm Bill and it has passed? It, and, and not only passed, but signed by the President. So it is the law. So we have a long-term authorization, or some would say reauthorization. Um, uh, after a couple delays and extensions of the old farm bill, and for you know our producers, um, I guess uh, the bottom line, and of course we're corn and beans, some wheat, um, and livestock, was that the uh, commodities of corn and beans were pretty pleased. Uh, they got their um, uh, insurance uh, product that they need to make sure, and of course with the drought of two years ago. We know the importance of having an insurance product. Uh, so, um, and I think that's a conservative uh, approach to have when you're addressing this, that the government is involved in, in an insurance product so that farmers pay in, and if they don't pay in, they don't get help. So you get away from the disaster payment issue, and you and you get buy-in by the producers. And then there is an issue of setting what what is the, the crop price and all that stuff that's kind of more in the weeds, and I think our producers were happy with that. I think the ones that were a little disappointed was our livestock folks um, and some provisions on country of origin labeling. There was language in the House bill that they supported. It got stripped out of the conference. Uh, I talked to the Ag chairman who said that uh, they're going to introduce a bill and we'll go through the process and hopefully the Senate will pick that up. Uh, so not everybody was totally pleased. There was also a big uh, milk fight um, and you know so we're pretty close. Clinton County is our largest dairy producing county in the state of Illinois. So I had some concerns in watching that. I think they're pretty well pleased with how that got resolved. It's a you know, it deals with it's really a, uh, a co-op, and Prairie Farms is a co-op, and how, how do they deal with that, and how do they uh, set some prices. Now, those who are market-based conservatives are wondering, well, why is government even involved in this? Uh, we got involved back in the Great Depression, and now, um, as we try to move to a more market-based system, you just can't totally stop all these programs. you got to totally wean yourself off of it, and I think that's what we did in the farm world. Uh, farming has changed here in the United States. Uh, we're into a world market now. Very much and, so. And uh, the needs are different uh, for the farmers. The farmers don't need uh, subsidies like they used to. Uh, the farmers were so productive that they grew so much that the prices got uh, way below their price of production. Well, now it's uh, the world market has helped take care of that. We have hungry countries, hungry, prosperous countries that are uh, seeking out our agricultural products. And that's helped keep the price high no matter what's going on here in the United States. And there are no fuel debate. I mean, so, you know, what you want to do for in any business is you want to ex expand your your market of your product. I mean, your, your uh, radio program, and you want to be able to expand your listening audience. Well, our farmers want to be able to expand their ability to sell corn, whether that's in the renewable fuel market, whether that's for internal consumption in our in our food industry here in the United States, or whether it's overseas. So so we do that through the energy bill. We do that through uh, FDA reform and making sure that uh, we have a, food, a safe food supply. We do that through trade. That's part of this president's trade uh, agenda. But we also need to get the commodities to the locations that we want to sell it to. That's why a highway bill, updating our roads and bridges is important. That's why another bill that uh, is closer to passage than the highway bill, which is a Water Resources Development Act. That's our lock and dam in, a, in our inland waterway system, which is a true treasure. Most people don't appreciate it. But most bulk commodity products, corn, beans, uh, coal, limestone rock, uh, now crude oil, um, a lot of it goes through our inland waterway systems, which is the Ohio River, the Wabash, the Mississippi, the Illinois River, uh, and we need to make sure our lock and dam and our levee systems are up to snuff to keep that system operating. Yeah, our ag products from here use that system. You bet. All the way up to Minnesota. You bet. And, and we would be in trouble if that were to break down. And, and, it, and it's nice that we've had it and we can look at it and say, oh, this has been here for a long time. It's really great. But the fact is, Things don't last forever like that. A lot of these locking dams are 600 foot. Now the barges run 1,200 foot uh, systems, um, and they were built in the 30s, so they're 70 years old. And um, and so the, for your listening audience, 
you, when you have a barge, 1,200 foot, uh, that takes hundreds of tractor trailers off our interstate highway system. That's what they have to remember. It's a, 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 an environmentally safer and more efficient way to move these bulk commodity products.